Hello, good day and welcome back. And today we're in section 11 of chapter 5 and we're talking about arrays and JavaScript. And we're going to continue on arrays and JavaScript by looking at how you access elements inside array and basically get a little bit more familiar with using arrays. So initially when I planned this section, these are things I want to cover, but we're going to leave off modifying an array because I think that's going to be add too much content and too many new ideas to this video. So we'll leave that off and we'll just work on how to access elements and how to count the elements in an array. So we are, we're collecting um, the temperature readings throughout the day and we're doing this for um, all the days of the week. And so far we only have seven days and we look at it and we see that our values, three values we read during the day, can be grouped. Yes. So that um, we have them grouped and we have learned how to, about the array data type. We know that array data type fit perfectly with what we want to do. So we've started using an array to store our information. But there's something that we didn't really cover about arrays. And that is what it look like conceptually and some of the properties of an array. To visualize what an array look like. We need to know if you have uh, individual values and you group them together, then those become what we call the element of the array. And the element of the array is just what a name group in. And the other thing is we want to think about is the array itself assign an address or an index for each element that you put inside that array. It's called zero base indexing. And so the very first element is at zero. The next one you add is at one, two, and so on. Even if you remove something, you never remove the middle element at three, well then the one at four becomes, um, gets the element address three. So regardless of how many things you put in that array, it always starts with the index zero and it goes up. And if you add things, the index just change. If you remove things, again. Um, but those always there, like you cannot have a gap, like you can go index zero, one, and then index four, okay? The other thing that an array has is a length as a property. And we'll get into objects and properties uh, when we start talking more about objects in later videos, but it just suffice to know that so one of the things that the array knows is how many elements are in there. And you can interrogate or then ask the array how many elements are in it by using the link property. Um, actually access an element or an array. Well, we use the same square bracket, which uh, we call an index operator, and you just put the number or that index value in between the square brackets with, um, after you append that at the end of the array name, and that gets you whatever value is at that location. Now, the index is an integer value, but remember, you could put anything, um, store any type of value at that location. So it could be a function, another array, or whatever. Um, and in terms of the length, you just say array that length, and that gives you the length. All right, let's go look at some example in code now. Okay, so let's look at some of those examples we're talking about. So here I have um, an array, and for day one, and what I'm going to do is going to print it out, and then I'm going to access the three um, elements in that array by using their index or their address inside the array. And so that's what I did here and saved their variable and then I printed it out. Then I did the same thing again, but this time I did not use the variable. I simply just used the array directly and you should expect that the results should be the same. And that's a sample output. And um, we can do the same thing here. And you can see I ran the code here and that was the result. And of course I can run it again. So, um, you know, it's not a problem. So I get the same result. And the final example is when I use the length. Um, here I print out um, the length of day one. We should expect three. Uh, three. And then uh, week one, I printed out its length and it says five. And the reason it says five is because I'm missing two days, right? I'm missing day three and day five. Now, of course it's too short. And so if I print, if I run that, um, you should expect five. But if I insert, let's say, day five back and I save my result and then I rerun this, I should expect six. And that is exactly what I get. And if for whatever reason I decide to add some other temperature at midnight, for example, um, to say to do some more temperature reading, it's probably going to go down to 65 or something. Um, and so unless you have some crazy wild swings. Um, and so I rerun this, um, day four, you know, has four temperature reading. That's because I've added one, right? 
All right, so um, that's it. Let's um, wrap up the example. Oh, one more thing. Um, so documentation for all this array stuff you can find on the Mozilla Developers Network. And I'm going to put a link to this in the ending slide. All right. Okay, so I hope the example and this video was illustrative and you learned something. So what we did today was how to access elements in an array, how to use the link property, and you can find more documentation on the Mozilla Developers Network where I've shown and I have the link here. And take care. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.